Imagine straight up ignoring Topps' monopoly in 1975 and launching your own illegal baseball card set. This is the surprising history of the 1975 SSPC set. In 1965, Topps had exclusive contracts with almost all the players in Major League Baseball, so Fleer took them to court. The FTC concluded that because the contracts only covered the sale of baseball cards with gum, that Fleer could still compete by selling other small, low-cost items like stickers. However, in 1965, Fleer chose not to pursue such options and sold its remaining player contracts to Topps for $395,000 in 1966, and that decision gave Topps an effective monopoly of the baseball card market for the next quarter century. And as baseball cards grew in popularity, a company emerged called the Card Memorabilia Associates, or TCMA, and they emerged as the first card manufacturer that tried to target the hobby specifically. In 1975, this group of hobbyists and baseball enthusiasts included prominent figures like Keith Olbermann, who would later become a well-known journalist and TV personality, and they had this magazine called Collectors Quarterly for the hobby. In 1975, they created the Sports Stars Publishing Company, or SSPC, and it's a baseball card set as an attempt to challenge the Topps Monopoly. These cards were sold only as complete sets of all 630 cards and only direct to the hobby. The fronts of the cards have no text, no team name, no player name, and they were viewed as a pure card design. This design was meant to resemble the 1953 Bowman set, where the card fronts contain only the color photo and no print, and, and I think they look great. However, in my opinion, the back of the cards of the SSPC set come across as a bit cheap, like your kids' Little League cards. But the information on the back contained the player's stats, bio, and something never found on a Topps card, which is the player's uniform number. Notable rookies in the 1975 SSP set include Robin Yount, Dennis Eckersley, which this picture to me is just hilarious, George Brett, kind of making a funny expression on his rookie card here, Gary Carter, and then to me, this iconic photo of Jim Rice. So if, like me, you're a Sox fan, if you have a Jim Rice collection, uh, I would encourage you to consider adding the 1975 SSPC rookie to your collection as that photo to me is just iconic of Jim Rice in Fenway Park. The SSP set, because of this clean or pure card design, was also great for autographs. And this is back in the time when often collectors would mail a letter through the post office with the card asking a player for an autograph. And many times the cards weren't returned as an autograph and this SSPC set was perfect because they weren't very expensive cards. And so if they got lost in the mail or a player ignored the request, there was not much loss here. In fact, many of these SSPC card sets were sold through hobby stores that included the addresses of some of the major league players, um, which is why you're going to see so many of these early TCMA uh, SSPC set cards offered on eBay with autographs. Now, if you compare this with Topps, a unique feature of Topps cards is that they took the autographs from the players' exclusive contracts with Topps and put them onto the cards as part of the design in many years. But nothing's more awkward than getting an authentic autograph written over these facsimile autographs right here on the card. So you can see examples of the double George Brett, Brett the double Robin Yount, and so forth. Now, predictably, Topps took notice of SSPC sets and went to court to stop the further release. Topps held exclusive license with Major League Baseball, which prevented SSPC from selling the cards commercially. So... This SSP set cards were never widely distributed in the United States. As a result, most of the sets were sold through mail order in Canada, which is often why it's associated with being SSPC Canada sets. TCMA began making cards for minor league players back in 1972, and after this aftermath, they would go on to produce hundreds of TCMA minor league team sets over the next, teen, next 16 years. So they focused their business primarily on the minor league baseball cards, to avoid this Topps monopoly and all the legal implications. 
uh, including this really cool 1979 Tidewater Tides Mookie Wilson car. All right, doing some research about this SSPC set from 1975 got me excited about it, and I went out and bought one on eBay. This is the first time I'm opening it, and I will say that it was packaged very well. I was very happy with it. You can get these complete sets for about 100 to 200 dollars on eBay. Um, and I'll show you some cards. So the rookies start at 126 with George Brett and above. So I'm going to pick from the front here and show you some cards. And then I think one of my thoughts is to get the rookies graded um, and then maybe sell them and get my money back and make a profit and then have the rest of these for real like collector's items. So as you can see, card designs are very simple. The cardstock actually feels really thick. They feel great. Um, this is my first time actually holding the 1975 SSPC sets. It looks like they're done by a team order here first, so I'm deep in the Braves. Let's see if I can get out of here. Here we go. We got the big red machine. So um, I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the cardstock. I do like the, we can get to Pete Rose here. I do like the simple design. They look really kind of classic. Johnny Bench. Yeah, here's Johnny Bench. And here's the back for you guys. And then I'll probably just show you Pete Rose. Um, but I want to get you a sense of just what these cards look like. Um, Joe Morgan. Here he is. Pete Rose. I guess it's fun when you talk about illegal card sets to also include Pete Rose in here. Um, but these are super cool cards. Better card stock than I expected. Like I mentioned, the back is a little bit bland, but really deep in bios. And then having the player's uniform number on here is pretty awesome. So I wanted to show you what they look like in person. And I'll go through and look at the quality of the rookies in here and the centering and so forth and see if I want to have any that I would send away to be graded. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and a share. And we'll see you back for more stories.